This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. Do you know the difference between cryptocurrency and digital currency? Well, if not, you better watch this episode carefully. China's social credit-driven digital currency will soon be on the way to the West, and you need to know what it's about. Former Navy SEAL David Lopez explains how to use it to your advantage before the system takes advantage of you. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Shabbat Shalom, Torah fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. By now, it should not be a surprise to you that there are forces at play here that are corralling us according to plan for the uh, greater good. But what will it mean for our freedom to work, to live as we choose, and most importantly, to worship Yehovah? Well, David Lopez joins us tonight for the first episode of Crisis Upon Crisis. You need to really pay attention to this one. That's coming up a little bit later, but right now we have a special anniversary to talk about on the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. There you have it there on your screen. And so let's talk about what happened on this day in history with my co-host, our partner services director, David Robinson. Hello, Scott. Good to be here. Good to have yeah. you here. So this is when, uh, this is episode 68 in the Chronological Gospels. This is when Yeshua and his disciples were walking through a field, not mm -hmm. the exact day, but, but the week when they did this, and they, they took the heads of grain. Right. And they, so the they, winnow, what's it called? Winnowing. Yeah, so, so they, the winnowing, yeah, so they, they, they picked it, so they harvested, mm -hmm. and then they uh, winnowed it by rolling it in their the hands. the scaly part off the grain. Yep, yeah, and so then they, they ate it, which was considered grinding. Right, <laughs> working. Yeah, by <laughs> whose crazy authority was it? Well, this was the, the Pharisees. It was the, the, yeah, it's, uh, what is it, uh, one of the 39, or what, the 39 categories of activities that are actually prohibited on, on the, the Sabbath, Sabbath right. right. So they did this on the Sabbath. Of right. the oral Torah. Right, of the oral Torah. So, right. And this, these were all what they call fences to keep us away exactly. from breaking the Torah, the Torah. Yeah, you and know? I think it's so awesome because <laughs> Yeshua just, he, he, he just knew how to respond, yep. you know, and he talked about David and the priest in the, in the holy place and mm -hmm. eating the bread and stuff. And it, it's just amazing how he could just shut them up. Yeah, exactly, right? Because, well, yeah, then they thought, oh, yeah, right, David did this. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I should be quiet. <laughs> now what I do with this. Anyway, right. so that happened on this day in history uh, with, with Yeshua. So that's just, uh, that's in the Chronological Gospels, uh, episode, or not episode, event number 68. And it's on the same page as every uh, version of the Chronological Gospels from the regular size to the big size, and the, even the Educator's Edition mm -hmm. is all the same size. Yep. Um, so now, you know, the, the, we're in midsummer here. And, uh, you know, we've been doing all right, so we want to, first of all, thank everybody yes, for... Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, for, for donating to the ministry throughout the summer. You know, a lot of people forget to do that, right? Yeah. So we, we have to harp on people saying, remember to, mm, yeah. to give, because we need to keep going here. We, we, we can't just yeah. stop Shabbat Night Live, otherwise people say, well, what happened to Shabbat Night Live? Well... <laughs> yeah. Run out of funding, that's yeah. what happened. But, yeah. So anyway, now speaking of funding, um, you know, we... Some people ask, you know, in that first bit in Shabbat Night Live, which we're doing right now, they say, you know, why do you have to make it a commercial? It's the only opportunity we get right. to talk to everyone and, and show you what we have as fundraisers. That's what these things are. This is a fundraiser for mm -hmm. the ministry. Now, you know, we give you uh, David Lopez, teaching. Uh, his teaching as a gift. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like you're buying the teaching. It, it is a gift to the ministry. And Michael says, when people give, I want to give something back. Right. That's what this is all about. So forgive us if this sounds like a commercial, but really this is the only opportunity we have That's to right. tell and you I, about these things. And it's very important as a fundraiser. And, and, and we know where they're at. Our, yeah. You know, we've thought that way in the past, sure. before we've worked in ministry or so forth. But when you're on this side, you really <laughs> understand that if there's not an ask, you're not going to receive. Right. And, and so, so we just do it to keep, to continue to give our people, yeah. uh, you know, 
good material that they can grow with. Yeah, and this was a really good one about, from David Lopez. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna hear kind of the same, not the same message, it's an adjunct to this message tonight on the episode. Uh, but this is called Kingdom Come. And I just wanna read a little bit about this. It says, are the kingdoms of this world driving us to kingdom come? Uh, former Navy SEAL David Lopez shares an enlightening perspective on what's happening on the world stage. From Big Pharma, to the world on terror, gene editing, video games, digital currencies, the Second Amendment, we touch all kinds of sacred cows on this right. thing. Uh, Kingdom Come will give you a greater understanding as to how technology and systematic crises are being used to condition your choices. Right. So this is all about, are we being deceived? How can we avoid yeah. being deceived? That's what this is about. Really important stuff from a guy who's been on the other side, right. working for the government, mm -hmm. knows some of the tricks, and is exposing them. Have That's you ever looked into that, that, the China uh, security-driven currency? I did, tell currency. me what you found. No, I mean, I've, I've just read a little bit about it, but you know, we have a FICA system which grades your, uh, your credit score, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, your trustworthiness of repaying a loan back. But this is based on so much more. China has like 200,000 cameras, so you figure one camera per seven people. And they not only, they use your social media, they use you know, the cameras, what you look like, your friends. Mm -hmm. They use all these things to compile uh, this uh, social-driven, uh, credit-driven currency, and it's gonna be based on, it's not based on just your credit score, but it's based on so many other things. And right. that is creepy. Are you a good person? Or yes, so, yeah, right? how do you so, get along with yep. your friends? And all they mm -hmm. base it on all that. Exactly, it, it's a scary system, it and is. that's what uh, that, what David Lopez is talking all about in this teaching. It's our love gift this month, but we're going to let the uh, the commercial do the talking. Yes, <laughs> we will we'll run, we'll right? run out of time. We'll stop talking. We'll stop talking about it now. But before we go, uh, we wanted to tell you about a new opportunity to take a ham radio course with uh, Don Goodrich. He offered a a course before, and he's got a new one. So, uh, Don, welcome back to Shabbat Night Live. Hey, good to see you too, Scott. So tell us about this, this new class we have going on. We had lots of people who were excited about it uh, last time, took the exam, and uh, well, you tell us how it went. Well, we had 11 people that took the exam and passed, and they now have their technician licenses. So that allows them to communicate locally in the, in the immediate region where they are. They need a general license to get into the Messianic net that, that Ted and I host, and to talk worldwide, actually. So we're starting up a general license class, uh, just like we did for the technician class. It'll be free. The start date is August 22nd. The class will be two hours per day for four days, uh, just like last time, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it'll be based on the general class license manual, uh, just like this one, that you can pick up from, a, uh, from Amazon or from ARRL themselves. Uh, for the exam, come exam time, you'll need a, a couple of IDs. One of them needs to be a photo ID, your FRN number that you picked up in the technician uh, level, and then a copy of your current technician license. Now, if you don't have your technician license, you can take the exam for the technician and the general during the same session. So you don't need it as an absolute prerequisite. So go back through and review the technician class recordings, which are now available. If you want to see those recordings and you don't have a link to them, send me an email and I'll recur return an email to you with those recording links. Uh, then of course, there's always the online practice exams that you can take uh, for uh, just like we did during the technician. The online official exam is, is again by ARRL, or you can go through your local ham radio club. Uh, the ham exam fee for, from ARRL is $15 again. Uh, the pool for this is a little bit more than the technician pool. It's 454 questions now out of 35 sections. There'll be 35 questions on the exam, one or two from each section of the book. You can miss nine and still pass. So just focus on the stuff that you know and come back to the ones that you don't feel as comfortable with later uh, and you'll do fine. It's right. an easy exam. Great. Uh, the FCC license fee for passing the exam again is $35 and then you're in. 
Okay, thanks, Don. Well, there's the information at the bottom of your screen. Now, Don, you said that starts August 22nd, so folks, you've got 10 days to sign up. Better do it now. We want to get in on this and be uh, prepared for uh, Revelation Preparation, which is the, the series we talked about when we first talked about this. So, uh, uh, Don, thank you for doing these classes. We really appreciate it, and uh, we will talk to you again. And again, thank you very much for running these classes. You're welcome. Thanks, Scott. All right. Thanks again, Don. Okay. So do you know the difference between cryptocurrency and digital currency? If not, you better watch this episode carefully. Former Navy SEAL David Lopez explains how to use it to your advantage before the system takes advantage of you. And right now, we have about two minutes to your advantage. So go and grab your bread and wine to meet us back here for The Kiddish with Michael coming up. Are the kingdoms of this world driving us to kingdom come? Former Navy SEAL David Lopez shares an enlightening perspective on what's happening on the world stage. You'll learn who the major players are, why justice seems unattainable, and how the kingdom of Yehovah wins in the end. How is God gonna redeem this world and make this new world? He's not gonna wanna destroy the righteous with the wicked. We know from Abraham's discourse that he doesn't. Well, he's separating us right now off of a very simple decision. Kingdom Come with David Lopez will give you a greater understanding as to how technology and systematic crises are being used to condition your choices. This special teaching is our gift to you for supporting A Rude Awakening International. We'll send you Kingdom Come with David Lopez on DVD or Blu-ray when you give a love gift donation of $50 in August. Donate $100 and we'll send you Kingdom Come plus a coffee table book containing breathtaking 19th century artwork of famous stories in the Bible. Or donate $300 and we'll send you the teaching, the Bible story coffee table book, and a decorative glass box featuring artwork of the tree of life and three vials of anointing oil, frankincense, myrrh, and rose of Sharon. These gifts are available for a limited time from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. These special gift collections are available only in August and supplies are limited. Get these exclusive thank you gifts now from Michael Rood. Call 888-766-3610. That's 888-766-3610. Or get your gifts online at monthlylovegift.com. The night of the Last Supper, Yeshua took bread and he blessed the Most High. Barukata Yehovah Elohim Malakalam Hamotzi Lachem Miharetz. And he said, This represents my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you do it from now on, understand this has always represented my broken body. And often, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of what I'm about to do for you. Then he took his cup and he told his disciples after he blessed it, after he blessed the Most High, and he said, Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaAlam, Borei Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth and has created the fruit of the vine. And Yeshua said, you divide my cup of among yourselves. And as he passed his cup around and they poured a bit of his into their cups, it got back to him empty and he said, 
I will not drink a drop of the fruit of the vine till I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. But as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Not only that I will pay for the broken covenant, that I will pay for the transgression, that I will renew the covenant in my blood, but also remember that I am waiting for you at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that is when I will drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. When last we spoke with our guests, we were doing this, Operation Innocence with David Lopez. And David was involved in rescuing kids from some nightmarish situations in Haiti, and he joins us again today. So welcome back to Shabbat Night Live, David. Thank you for having me back. It's, it's been good. a while. You know, people watch this and they're gonna go, wait a minute, there's a guy with long hair there and he's he's a little <laughs> bit heavier than this guy. Is that the same guy? I got a little bit of a haircut just a couple months ago, but it was, uh, yeah, eight years of growing my hair out. So yeah, everyone <laughs> everyone that hasn't seen me the first time, they, they see me like, wait, is it the same guy? Yeah, no, you look good, you look, you, look, you look great. So Operation Innocence, again, this was, if we can recap this, this was a whole series you did with Michael on this stage yeah. about uh, going in and rescuing kids who were caught in sex trafficking in Haiti, uh, among other places. And uh, I would hope that that is done, but it's not. No, um, the, the war continues. Um, there is, the, I guess, the one silver lining in all of it is there's just a lot of amazing groups now that mm -hmm. have jumped into it. And um, I've, I've really, you know, I, there's a, three different nonprofits that I kind of assist, and, and then those nonprofits align with others, and they're all doing different things. Some are focused on, you know, veterans like myself trying to do rescues and trying to work with police to do more rescues. Some are more focused on aftercare, what happens to these kids when they actually come out. Mm. Um, and some are raising awareness. There's a lot of different uh, focuses. Um, there's people that are focusing on technology to help. Uh, police, you know, spot child porn faster. So there's just all these different, there's there's a lot of different avenues to actually mm -hmm. assisting with this. So I'm just glad to see so many different groups. And uh, so you mentioned military. Now you are uh, ex-military. Yeah. Or once you're in the military, you're always military. That's guess, right. right. So yeah. you were yeah. you were a SEAL, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Former Navy SEAL. Yeah. Wow, good for you, awesome. And uh, so is that the nature of most guys coming into this? They're ex-military looking to use their skills? To help others? Yeah, I'd say I'd say the vast majority have either military or law enforcement background, and um, some are both, mm -hmm. you know. And so, this is an issue where um, you know one of the groups that I've been you know helping with for a while, you know, Covenant Rescue Group. They've been doing uh, they've been focusing mostly in the U.S. Just going in, they go in with a police department, they train them for two days. Hmm. Everything from shooting, all the stuff that those you know, officers need to learn. But then it segues into more specific training on how to actually find these guys. And almost every time they do it, it's about a four-day event. And almost every time they catch about eight to ten wow. you know, pedophiles each time. You know, and, unfortunately, it's that easy. And, and it's not just in Haiti either, right? I mean, a lot of this happens right here on our right soil. Here. Oh, it's it's happening. Yeah, every I, the, the running... That's a kind of bad joke is that everyone everyone kind of thinks it's happening somewhere else, you know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I hear every country I'm in. Everyone's like, wow, I thought that was happening here. And everyone's like, oh, I thought that happened in Haiti or I thought that happened yeah. in Thailand, which it does. But no, it's happening everywhere. And it's um, the majority of people being, being uh, harmed or by friends and family, you know, people that know the mm. person, you know, it's not always the taken scenario where there's a group of mafia that come and take the kid, that happens yeah. as well, but it's usually people close to the victims. And not to harp on this topic for a while, because we want to get onto other things, but um, do you, does your group help train uh, young women and kids how to avoid situations? Absolutely. Actually, um, we're one of the blockchain companies I'm involved with, I know we'll talk about later, um, is we created like a learn to earn protocol where people actually get digital rewards when they actually learn all the th things to spot. So oh. people are, we're okay. kind of trying to create new ways of getting the information out to make it more, I guess, viral so people mm -hmm. will you know, be able to do their part. And, and that's the biggest thing. If everyone knows how to spot the signs and how to, mm. you know, give law enforcement advance warning, that's a, a big a big part. To we'll talk about that for a second because I, this is close to home for me because uh, my, my daughter went to college uh, in, in Arkansas. And 
there were a couple of her uh, teammates, she was on a sports team at the college, and those girls noticed that people were following them around uh, a Walmart with noth nothing in their cart, just kind of kept following them, and these girls fortunately caught on to that and went, something's weird here, and you know, basically got into their cars quickly and noticed these people were following them out. And so, I mean, how does someone avoid a situation like that? Well, um, there's little things that you can do to give yourself better odds. Uh, some very simple things, especially if you feel like you, you might be in a position where someone is following you. A lot of people are very vulnerable when they're actually um, at their car. Mm. And, and so one thing you can do, a small thing, is instead of going to the car, opening up your purse, rummaging around for the keys to get inside the door, that's what you become very vulnerable when you're in that, I'm looking for my key, I'm standing right mm -hmm. beside my car, that's the moment. So uh, one simple thing you can do is when you walk to your car, already have your keys in your hand. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a very quick process when you actually get into the car. And you're not you're not standing there. You're not you're not you're not head. Your head isn't down. Your head's out and aware of what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's a very simple. You know, if you feel like someone's watching you, if you feel like you you know that maybe you just don't feel safe in the area that you're in. Simple. Just have awareness. It's hard to have awareness when you're looking for things. So yeah. that's a simple one. You know, even the the coaches of the teams were uh, they forbade the girls to go to that particular Walmart after dusk. It was a, wow. a team rule that if you were caught in that Walmart after dusk, you were uh, banned from practice for a day or something to that effect. But they, they were that serious about it. Wow. There's a lot of that going on. So, yeah. So, it just proves that this is still, still needed. Now, you mentioned that uh, blockchain. So, let's get into this a little bit. Uh, so, the blockchain community is, is helping out with this type of thing. So, are they yeah. funding? Like, first of all, let's get into blockchain. People will go, wait a minute, I've heard that term blockchain, and we've had one guest where we were talking about um, uh, things, things of, of, of health and nature where, where it was involved uh, a couple of years ago. But what exactly is blockchain, if we can get a synopsis from you? It's a decentralized leisure is really all it is. It's, um, it's self-authenticating, um, it's self-verifying. Um, as more blocks get created, they're verifying the existing blocks that already exist. It's very difficult to ever remove something off of the blockchain because of the way the technology works. Okay. So it almost, the easiest way I think to explain blockchain is it gives you a sense of digital ownership. Okay. In some way. And that's, that's kind of what the craze of NFTs is right now. It's a little piece of art that's being put in the blockchain, mm -hmm. which really can't be taken down. And so it has a, uh, a perception of, of permanence there. And so because of that, and that ability to own that or fractionally own that, it's giving people a sense of, well, hey, what if this is worth more in the future? Hmm. And, and that, like, think about what baseball cards are printed on uh, cardboard. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and yet perception creates value, right? And so this Mickey Mantle may be worth something in ten more years. Same thing; it's just happening to digital items that are now permanent. Interesting. Now, there, attached to blockchain is uh, Bitcoin and all these different things. And so now the the cryptocurrencies, yeah, a lot of people are using that now to fund operations like <laughs> yeah. this. Is that right? Yeah, I. I um, after this is interesting because after I got into the human trafficking uh, initiative, my I, I was puzzled with how do we? I was trying to figure out how do we do this at a larger scale, and how do we do this to where veterans are being assisted and and being actually paid to go do this type of work. The thing mm -hmm. I kept running into, you could ask um, the majority of veterans if you if you say anything about this topic, human trafficking, they're going to immediately say, when can I go? Where am I going? I don't need money, just send me. Mm -hmm. Eventually that becomes unsustainable because either the veteran's gonna miss out on right. doing a different job they could be doing well on. I've seen veterans go broke doing this type of work. And, and a lot of times, in, in some nonprofits, they, they just kind of let people keep giving, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I always thought, man, it's, it's, it's challenging, you know, because a veteran, you know, they're, they're gonna do it. If you ask them, nine times out of 10, they're gonna say, yes, I don't need money, I'm just gonna go do it. And I love that about just veterans. Go get the bad guy. I love that about veterans. Mm -hmm. um, but I was trying to figure out, how do we do this where it's more sustainable? People can actually, 
you know, make money in doing what they love doing and doing this long term. And it, it's kind of tough when it's short term, you know, someone does it just for one week and then they don't do it again. It's kind of right. hard to keep that sustainable. So um, I, I stumbled across, you know, and some of my best friends were some of the early Bitcoin miners and some of the biggest in the world. And they were trying to solve these same problems. And so years ago, I was in Abu Dhabi with a couple of them. And they came to me and said, hey, let's do this at a much higher level. And they have been um, very much assisting all over the world hmm. um, with multiple different groups that I've been a part of. And we've been helping everywhere from Ukraine, obviously the, the situation in Ukraine. We've been helping all, um, run operations out of Haiti still, uh, all through the Caribbean, South America, and Africa. So there's stuff going on around the clock because of the crypto community. And it's not something that we even talk about a lot. Um, what I love about the crypto community is the, the, for, an, for a nonprofit, in order to keep doing missions, you had to tell a lot of your story, which has a bit of a catch-22 to it, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to tell the whole story of right. how you're doing operations, obviously. Um, so for this to have the, you know, these types of uh, entities and organizations and, and big hitters, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, backing it really helps us to be able to kind of keep the story you know, more subdued and just to do the work. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's been a huge blessing. And, um, and that, that's really been, uh, that's, that's the, it, the issue isn't going away, but there is um, a lot more resources being pulled around the issue. Mm -hmm. And that's comforting to me to know. And that's, you know, that's where we're kind of heading with this whole conversation we're going to have for uh, hopefully a few weeks here uh, on Shabbat Night Live is, is the power of the individual person to help out, not depend on governments, uh, not depend on you know, international conglomerates to direct where we're going. You know, Yahovah has called on us to be the leaders. Uh, Josh Tolley is, is a big proponent of this, that we are meant to be the entrepreneurs. We are meant to be those who are leading others. Uh, what else would be the job of Jehovah's people <laughs> but to right. be the leaders? Uh, and like everyone looked, you know, looked up to Israel. They, they were the ones who, they could see that God was behind them. So we, we wanna show that God is behind us. So a lot of believers are kind of skeptical about the whole uh, Bitcoin thing. Uh, my son is into Bitcoin. I, I haven't dipped my toe in because I'm, I'm too busy doing other things. I can't pay attention and really know what it's yeah. about. Some people think it's a trap, all this kind of thing. And so we're going to get into all that. So explain to me why Bitcoin uh, and blockchain is an advantage, especially for believers. Well, as we're as we're airing this right now, and Bitcoin is is very you know Bitcoin's having a tough time right now. All the cryptocurrencies are. Um, but the, the real benefit to the technology is it's an alternative to government-regulated, bank-controlled uh, currencies. Um, it's decentralized. It doesn't have a single point of failure. Hmm. Um, and there's two types of blockchains. And I want to create two different kind of categories for people to consider. Because um, a lot of people that, that watch the show, they're, they're cognizant that digital currency is kind of something that in our... Uh, eschatological framework is bad, mm -hmm. right? Because it leads towards global currency, which is coming. But what blockchain does, what the decentralized blockchain does, like Bitcoin, you know, there's no CEO of Bitcoin. There's no C-suite of Bitcoin. There's no one running Bitcoin besides people running their, their, their miners. Mm -hmm. It can exist everywhere. And if you shut it down in this country, it just moves to another country. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning to me when we were talking about putting together this episode, it's, it's almost like um, wh what I explain, it's, it's a strange example, but it, what I explain to people when they do, uh, when women do a mammogram, uh, the plates are involved, but if, there, if, if there's a cancerous tumor in there, uh, there is a potential for those plates to, when they're squishing, they will cause the tumor to, to uh, spread. And to your point, that's what the uh, blockchain is like. If you try it's and suppress like a, it, it's just going yeah, to spread. It, and like um, a good example of that would be, you know, um, one of the biggest crypto mining, you know, Bitcoin mining nations in the world up until last year was China. Hmm. And um, China's also rolling out its own blockchain, which is a controlled blockchain by their government. Mm -hmm. which I would imagine happens in Europe and in the U.S. eventually, too. Eventually, that'll happen. And it'll use blockchain ledger technology, but it won't be decentralized. It'll be controlled. 
and 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 that's that's typical. I mean, almost every government is going to want to control their currency. And so there is a scary trend, I think, that could happen with digital currency in the future and tying it to social credit scores and other things mm-hmm. like that, which is very a very, very real threat. But Bitcoin is the biggest threat to those types of coins. And this is why the Chinese, you know, they keep threatening almost every year to ban Bitcoin. They did. They kicked out all the Bitcoin miners, I think, uh, last year, really uh, late last year. And um, Bitcoin really held its value. A lot of people, it was 60% of the miners, close to 60% of the mining of all Bitcoin was done in mm-hmm. one area of China, one province of China. And Bitcoin's still here. It went to other countries. Other countries w- opened their arms up, mm-hmm. right? And in even those countries, there's been politics, there's been people trying to shut down Bitcoin. So a lot of the stuff we're seeing right now is very coordinated. They don't... Whatever government's going to propose a state-sanctioned blockchain currency, they're not going to want competition with a decentralized currency. So, you know, my, my you know, from a, a freedom, of, you know, freedom, uh, to, the ability to have the, uh, your own finances to do what you want to do with them, mm-hmm. Bitcoin is by far the best option comparing it to nation state, you know, central bank-backed, you know, currencies. I don't see anything out there even close to it. And that doesn't mean, you know, I'm not into gold and assets and other things that are, you know, have tangible value. It should be one, you know, I think, you know, crypto should be, you know, have one eye on it. And everything's really low right now. So it's a good time to actually jump in because it's a very, very much a bear market. But um, it is, um, I, I think it could be in this new world that's kind of being created, you know, where people are kind of taking sides, mass migrations to Florida. People are starting to move near people that have similar common values. Mm-hmm. I would anticipate that that trend continues and even intensifies. And I don't think that um, those regions, wherever they form, that choose to preserve freedom of speech, they're going to most likely be using some form of decentralized cryptocurrency. You mentioned this to me also uh, previously before the cameras came on about how it's interesting to note, like when you mentioned that, uh, you know, China, there were people in China trying to create uh, or, or sustain Bitcoin. And if it was squashed there, it would, it would rise in another place, in another country. And you have to just sit back and go, wait a minute. So you mean people that don't think like us, don't even maybe believe like us, all believe in freedom of speech and the power of the individual? Yeah. Yes, and you were saying that that's very, a very uh, military mindset. So take me back to what you were talking about there, how everyone kind of has to come together and work together. Yeah, well, um, if it, I mean, we were kind of joking before we started here. You know, the last time I was on was in 2000, uh, late 2019. 19, yeah, that's yeah. the date on here, 2019. And look, we're in a different world now, right? And... Um, I, I see a big silver lining in this. In the world, it looks like the world's being separated into two different camps. And, and eventually, I would surmise that the people that hold on to freedom over security are going to be ostracized com- entirely from mm-hmm. modern society, eventually. Um, so, but the good part about this whole story is we're getting, we're, we're seeing who our friends are right now and who our friends aren't. Uh, because we've all kind of been tested on wh- what are you going to do? Are you going to resign your freedom to get a, a, a sense of more security? And we've seen the way everyone's kind of going to go mm-hmm. with that decision. Now, some people might change their perspective, or hopefully they do. But it's kind of scary when you see how people are willing to do things that rationally they know don't make sense, but they know they should do it to fit into society. And that mm-hmm. is a very, that's a negative thing that is, that's clearly it has been a challenge for all of us. But what's so cool, the positive side is we're now finding people that we agree with that we didn't even knew we agreed with mm-hmm. on these very foundational principles that I would actually wager are spiritual principles. And yet we may not call God by the same name. We may not have doctrinal beliefs. We may not have a lot of, um, you know, the X's and O's may be completely different, but we're in the same camp now. And I think that's the blessing. Hmm. It's stretching us all. It's forcing us to, you know, maybe not resign our beliefs, but, but to connect with people on a, a basic moral principle as opposed to 
uh, how correct we can be doctrinally or whatever, yeah, you know, whatever, of, yeah, the nuances yeah. of each faith, right? We're just looking at the bare, like, who wants to be a free person? Right? Mm-hmm. That's like the only question plaguing society right now. So right. I just think this is a time where we need to let, let this, let everyone continue to show who they are. There is a passage in the scripture that says, let the righteous remain righteous still, let the wicked stay wicked still. So it's, I kind of see this as like, look, don't try to hop the fence in the, in, in the last stretch of this. Let's all be who we are and let's not condemn, you know, people are going to make different decisions and people are going to get angry at the other side. The political thing is going to make us more angry at each other. I think it's a waste of time. I mm-hmm. mean, just accept the people that you're finding and accept the blessing of it all. And that's really, I mean, that's, that's the only thing I've come out of this with like, it can either be terribly negative and you can look at all the bad things that are happening and all the intrusions on civil liberties and it is scary. But what does that fear, where does that take us? Mm-hmm. You know, we should just look at, you know, we have an opportunity now to build true relationships with people that truly do have an alignment, a core alignment, where maybe we thought we had that core alignment, but after these last two years, we realized we don't. (laughs) Yeah, very good point. So let's come back to that. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. Uh, Someone else is the one to thank for you watching this because they donated to Rude Awakening to help make this program happen because David had to arrive here and uh, we're glad to have him here. And it's because of that support that he's here. So why don't you donate now so that others can see this and other programs into the future? That's how this whole thing worked. We've been talking about how others are supporting uh, programs like this uh, in places like Haiti and elsewhere around the world through blockchain technology and through Bitcoin and this kind of thing. It's basically people coming together and supporting one another for a common cause. So we hope that you see this as one of those avenues to help promote information like this and you can be part of making that happen. So we'll give you a couple minutes to do that. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you for your support of Rude Awakening International. What did you use? American dollars? Probably. What about Bitcoin? Well, let's talk more about that. We were on this topic uh, just before the break. We were talking about how uh, you brought up a great point uh, that safety and freedom are polar opposites. They are different things. And we were also talking about how Yehovah wants 
believers to be the entrepreneurs. Well, an entrepreneur is not after safety. If you're after safety, you're going to go be an employee of somebody who's already established a business. But if you are the risk taker, if you're the, in the wild west of your thinking, you're going to be that entrepreneur. You're going to be after the freedom to write your own rules uh, under your own company. Of course, it's not without headaches, but I think that's what this is all about. This is why the draw to Bitcoin, to blockchain technology, it's like, let me get away from that. Take me back to the Wild West <laughs> a little bit. Well, the early, the early Bitcoin um, um, enthusiasts, they mm. were, you know, I'd say libertarian types, if not completely anarchist types that um, just see, you know, a lot of negativity coming from central banks in the way that, you know, the banking industry is tied to a lot of other world problems going on. Mm -hmm. And so it was a group of people, you know, that wanted to have financial freedom and wanted to be able to have, you know, digital ownership and, and that's the spirit of how this all started. Mm -hmm. And that's what got, that's why it got my attention. And I was, I, I'd kind of, you know, I've been through a lot and I've seen a lot in my time in the military and out of the military. And there is a lot of, you know, negative things that have come from these governments. Mm -hmm. And there's big wars being fought. There's a lot of money being printed. It's kind of a cyclical process. And I was looking for, you know, what else is out there? And so for me, Bitcoin and other coins like Bitcoin, decentralized coins, they became like uh, very fascinating to me because I loved that it couldn't be controlled. Mm -hmm. I loved that you can kind of be in some ways your own bank. You can buy a little device this big, looks like a thumb drive. You can put all your Bitcoin on it. You can go to Argentina and you can have your Bitcoin there. You can mm -hmm. <laughs> make like your own little... You know, people used to put their cash under a shoebox right? yeah. <laughs> underneath their bed. But really, it, it, that's an amazing capability if you think mm. about it. That in itself, the ability to have your assets with you mm. personally in that capacity. Go try to take out more than, you know, a, a few thousand dollars from your bank and see what they tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you can only take out this much every day because, you know, because they're right. investing with it. Well, that's <laughs> even the attraction with when people say, well, I can have gold into my IRA. Yeah. But then others say, well, that's on paper. It's much better to have it on you. Exactly. Physical, right? Exactly. And I'm always wondering, I always get frustrated. Like, why do I need permission to get my own money out of my own bank <laughs> yeah, at, right. at a certain level? It's just insanity. But... Um, you know, this, this is going to be a major issue. Um, I am not, you know, I, I, I want to just reiterate, there is two very different types of blockchain. And, and blockchain ledger technology can be decentralized where there's no central structure, there's no ownership structure. Or it can be completely controlled from the top down. And just it's just using the ledger technology and it's very fast and, and, and there's a lot of advantages to it. But it's still controlled. So... Mm -hmm. We would call that a kind of bastardized form of, of digital currency, which is what I would imagine is going to be, you know, the preeminent, you know, player in the future, both in Europe and the U.S. It already is in China. China already has its own digital yen and is rolling that out in the process of. So um, here's a scenario. Once, you know, in, in China is one fifth of the world's population. They already have a social credit system social credit score, which means, you know, you know, you could, you could have a very low social credit score rating. And once there's only digital currency and once the government owns that currency, if you go to, a, you know, if your credit score drops, you say something negative about the government, you can't fly, you can't buy anything, literally anything. It's not like you can go, oh, I'm going to use some cash for a little while until I get this card back. No, hmm. at all. And I think that should, that, that sounds to a lot of people like, that's just crazy. It already exists. Mm -hmm. One fifth of the world's population has already adopted. And you can imagine this too, where a neighbor says, well, okay, I, I believe in what you did and it's okay. I'll get you some food. 
uh, with my with mine, and I'll pass it off to you. Well, neighbor number two sees what neighbor number one did, and now his credit score goes down. So is he going to take that risk? Uh, oh yeah, um, guess what? I'm sure ratting out your neighbor is one way to get credit bumped up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. I mean, there's incentives in you know there's the the carrot and the stick mm -hmm. you know and so but that that type of governance as crazy as it sounds if i were a betting man the way that this is all being played out i would expect the chinese the chinese system is going to be what prevails in the modern world mm -hmm. the modern world has kind of shown its hand these last 2 years a very small amount of fear can generate a whole lot of public pr Mm -hmm. for a certain narrative, right? And imagine if there is a greater threat. Imagine if there is another more dangerous version, which we now know these are all man-made, created, you know, mm -hmm. agents. Well, if they can do this with a, a very, you know, it's, it, you know, COVID was a very, uh, if you were at risk or if you had health issues, could, could be very disastrous. But for most people, it was, you know, shrug it off like they did other other flus before that. But imagine if it was worse, they could get people to adopt anything they want. Mm -hmm. So I just think that, unfortunately, for the modern societies, they're probably going to adopt centralized currencies. They're probably going to have top-down control mechanisms for flight, for travel, for entrance, on, and they'll probably have alliances with the other countries mm -hmm. on who kind of people they allow in. The interesting thing to watch with crypto and decentralized coins is where they go. Hmm. So when... The Chinese shut down the Bitcoin miners, El Salvador, other countries throughout Central South America, adopted crypto. Hmm. So everyone's saying, all right, they're gonna shut you down here, we'll take you over here. And I think what could happen if this keeps going, if this trend continues, we could, it could be a complete renaissance for the developing world that has been terrorized in many ways by central banks, connected to our central bank. Right. And these governments know how they've been abused. And so that's why they're more willing to take a risk. They have less to lose in many ways, economically speaking. And look, in El Salvador, they have all this extra geothermal. They're, t they're hooking miners up to it all over the country. Hmm. And they're tying it to their, and they made it a tendered currency. So to me, I'm watching the migration of where the decentralized coins go. I would foresee wherever you see decentralized currency, you'll find a more free country in the coming years. You'll find less restrict, less, you know, um, draconian styles of government. And so we just have to watch how this plays out. Watch and see where does freedom migrate to. Hmm. And well, so, like everybody flooding to Florida, you've already mentioned, right? So it's yeah. like people will go where they can have the freedom. They don't want to be under somebody's thumb. Yeah, we're watching... Um, the bifurcation of society. And, and this is very obvious. We're being controlled to despise each other and to think of, each, or of the other side as, as you know, inherently evil or mm -hmm. unscientific or whatever it is. Or whatever happens, it's the other one's fault. It's the other one's fault, that's right. And I, I would never want, you know, I, I just feel like Whatever the political discussion is, my, my thing is we need to let people have a discussion. So as long as we can have discussion, debate, question, we should do that. But the moment that stops becoming, and there is, I think we're watching trends where discussion, medical discussions have been very much censored, mm -hmm. and which is the opposite, obviously, of science, right? I mean, science is the questions, right? Just a bunch of questions over and over. You keep asking them. And yet... This new version of um, corporate science is basically saying no more questions, mm -hmm. and I, I, so we just need to watch the warning signs. Look at you know what's happening. Look at the trends. Look at people moving to Florida. People are migrating towards pe with people that they align with, and that's going to I think greatly intensify. And I do think at some point um, these societies won't commingle anymore. And. You know, a lot of people are looking to that and they're afraid to make the move. They think, okay, well, I, I want to do this. You know, we've had a whole prepper series on here. People say, well, I want to get into that, but I don't know how to start. And gee, do I need to have a bug out bag and all this kind of thing. So regarding Bitcoin being the bug out bag, 
and people are saying, well, I've heard of Bitcoin. I, I don't know how it works. I don't know what to do. How do I get started in Bitcoin? What would we say to those people? I would say um, the easiest way to dip a toe for the crypto curious, <laughs> that's the best way of putting it, this one is <laughs> like crypto that. curious. Um, there's a number of different uh, exchanges, apps you can download. Just to start looking and seeing which coins are out there, you can read about it, you can look into their white papers. A white paper usually goes into the details of the smart contract in that blockchain. What was this blockchain created for? Hmm. Who's behind it? You can say, okay, this makes sense. I see this one's gonna be working with video games and this one's gonna be you know, working in social media and this one's trying to decentralize news. You know, so. They all have different focuses, um, but it's, you know, um, the easiest way is to, you know, Coinbase is a great, you know, easy tool to use, um, crypto.com. These, the, these are the big ones, right? And they're, the reason why I mention them is not because I'm not the biggest fan of central, you know, uh, exchanges because they do, you know, I wouldn't keep a lot of crypto on a centralized exchange because anything centralized can be, um, you know, targeted, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, but if you want to learn how to attach your bank to your crypto investments, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. You can cash out your crypto, you can send it directly to your bank. And that I think for most people answers to, well, how do I use this? If I have all this crypto, how would I even use it? It's actually much easier than a lot of people think. And it's getting easier. The more time goes on, there's, there's other technologies coming out. There's other integrations happening with Visa, with other major credit cards where crypto will be used interchangeably where you have this much Bitcoin, you put your card in and it deducts that Bitcoin and trans it, it exchanges it in real time to dollars or fiat currency anywhere I, in the world. I notice a lot of uh, tourist locations, even just down here on the East Coast, uh, they will have uh, people places that accept Bitcoin because mm -hmm. they know people are coming from all over the place and if you have different currency, well, who cares? Just use Bitcoin. And, and if societies want to, this is, I mean, you know, in, in any type of survival you know, scenario, anything can become currency. Beans and bullets can become currency, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting about this, there's little experiments going on right now. There's one in, uh, called Bitcoin Beach inside El Salvador. And I think it's like over 900 families and all the businesses in this area, all they take is Bitcoin for payment and all, they, mm. and all their commerce is done in Bitcoin. And if everyone is agreeing, you know, it can be, if, you know, just it's, I think they're using like the lightning network for Bitcoin, but it's, it, it can be done. And um, so I would look at it, I, I, obviously it shouldn't be, you know, I, this should just, I would keep one eye on crypto. I would also be looking into goals or all the, the, the you know, the other hedges against, mm -hmm. you know, um, all the inflation we're seeing, but it's definitely gonna be a player in this new world that's being created. And as you mentioned, this is as easy as, uh, like I have Robin Hood on my phone, right? So a few little investments we do, and, and you can just put money in from your bank account and put, take money out or whatever, that kind of thing. So it's the same thing with, with crypto. Oh, yeah. Uh, Crypto.com or, or, you know, um, Coinbase, uh, Binance or Binance US, if you're in the US, there's a lot of exchanges now that you can use. It really is pretty easy. Setting it up, you just, you know, enter your bank account information in. And um, it takes like a couple of days uh, to verify your bank, and then now you, you start trading cryptos. That centralized may not be the best, but uh, but there are it's there decentralized. Um... There is um, not not any big players yet, but there is um, discussions and different groups working on decentralized exchanges. Uh, okay. Completely decentralized exchanges, which I think would be an amazing thing for one of those to to really take take off. That's. A whole other, a whole, <laughs> that's a whole other advancement, I think, for, for crypto that a lot of crypto enthusiasts are waiting for. Because mm. it is kind of a catch-22. I mean, if, you know, but another thing you can do with crypto is you can have a cold storage, you know, you can have a, a device, whether it's a, a hardware device, like a Trezor, like I was telling you about, you can put your Bitcoin on, or you can actually get a um, non-custodial wallet, which is a little digital wallet on your phone or on your computer, that you can put your crypto in that's not attached to any central exchange. So if you made a lot of money or something in, in, on one of the, on Coinbase, you could always move that to a non-custodial wallet and now you have it off of the exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, what's so cool about digital currency.
So now what happens if you lose a little thing as you're on the train in Europe yep. or something? And you're going to cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only way place it lives. Is oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting it back. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that, that is the one caveat of it. This is like carrying <laughs> cash. It, it is. You, you need to think of it like... Um, like a locked briefcase with a combo that's filled with, you know, a lot of money. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, makes a lot of sense. All right, so some of the other things you're doing, uh, just off, off topic a little bit here, you're doing some things with uh, a good friend of ours who I've interviewed here uh, for The Health Awakening, Zeb Zelenko. Man, he is one of my dearest friends. We met through um, a really tumultuous time. He was, uh, as you know, he's the doctor that, treated uh, the White House and kind of treated, told the world about hydroxychloroquine and zinc. Um, and after Trump, Trump, you know, backed him and, and kind of retweeted, you know, the, you know, the hydroxychloroquine narrative. And then once Trump did that, uh, everyone attacked Dr. Zelenko right. for being pro-Trump. <laughs> Who you is know, this guy? Yeah. Political, <laughs> you know, how the political thing went. Um, but it turns out, you know, he'd always hit pieces done, like New York Times, Washington Post. They all tried to make him look like this small town quack that doesn't really know anything. Mm-hmm. And um, since then, there's been like uh, over uh, 10 major studies that have all shown the guy was right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, like 85% reduction in death and hospitalization by using early, you know, antiviral, mm-hmm. either ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine with zinc. And yet the public, you know, was told, you know, one's a horse dewormer. Joe Rogan got yeah. in trouble for talking <laughs> right. about it. I mean, and, but basically you can kind of tell anything that helped was pretty much, mm-hmm. uh, you know, villainized. Yeah. You know, I think even, was baby aspirin even, I think baby aspirin helped a little bit. So that was, there was this whole like, ooh, is, is baby aspirin safe? You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> and you searched him out just because you saw what he was trying to do and you recognize he needed some some help. I can't, one of my good friends introduced me, and and he was you know, I think partly you know we connected on a number of levels spiritually, um, our just our worldview, but I think he was he was creating a lot of enemies, and so yeah. he heard about me, and I had heard about him. We connected, yeah. and then he decided he wanted to start a business, and we got together and started something called Z Stack, um, and Z Stack was. Basically, it, we joke about this, like we should have never even had to start this company. He tried to just give everyone all the information and say, here's what you need to take. It's quercetin, zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin D3. And he was having a hard time getting the word out because everywhere he would say this, they would kick him off of platforms and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and how dangerous vitamin D is, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. That, it's, it's can't let, that, yeah. Can't let yeah. that kind of stuff um, <laughs> get out there. So. So we started this company. It did very well. And um, he's, I mean, he has saved so many people with it, you know, and that's the only reason why we even created this is because hydroxychloroquine, it, no one mm. could get it. And in uh, Governor Cuomo in New York basically didn't allow anyone to get prescribed. He told us that story. That was great. And pretty much shut him down. But Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're going to talk more about this. We're yeah. gonna, and that was just one crisis because this is not the end of this. I mean, we're going to talk next episode about how this is just one crisis leading to another, to another, to another. And there's a big plan behind it. And we're going to go into more about what that plan is, what Yehovah has planned for us, and why we win in the end. That's right. right. All right. So join us next time on Shabbat Night Live with David Lopez over here. Hope you're wildly entertained as I am. I'm learning all kinds of things here about Bitcoin and such, and we have lots more to learn in the coming episodes. So please join us for Shabbat Night Live next week. Until then, Shavua Tov. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.